I think we are now ready to go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, Dr. Kai Antley and I'm coming from um, Deakin University, from Cadet Virtual Reality Lab. Um, and uh, I'm a senior lecturer in industrial design as well as researcher um, with background in museum and heritage studies as well as in um, industrial design. So um, yeah, hi everyone again. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, Digital Heritage Conference. I'm looking forward to the next three days and also to uh, learn other, uh, from other presenters. And uh, congratulations to the organizers for this really fantastic lineup of speakers. Um, my discussion today um, will be around, um, uh, will be focused on the intersection of museum and heritage studies. Um, why I don't see this going. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll be around uh, in the intersection of museum and heritage studies, um, human-centered design, futures thinking, human space exploration, and extended reality or XR. Um, I also like to include 3D printing as part of the um, physical um, reality within this uh, reality virtuality in continuum that uh, Eric Champion just uh, talked about. And maybe because of the materialization of the computer models in forms of the tactile experiences um, and replicas of uh, heritage objects. To uh, give you um, a little bit of a background of our previous work, or one of my earliest um, or digital heritage projects goes back to 12 years ago when I was exploring the use of 3D technologies for interpretation of industrial design museum objects as part of my PhD. Uh, the case was an iconic Slovenian uh, K67 from the 60s, and that work was done at the University of Ljubljana. Here at Deakin, we are creating the mixed, we created the mixed reality dinosaur experience, the Little L project in collaboration with um, the National World Museum uh, and international recognized uh, paleontologist. We're also working with our center Melbourne uh, with them with uh, 3D digitized a selection of opera costumes worn by Dame Joanne Sutherland uh, and currently working on a virtual uh, experience. Um, aligned with the long UNESCO City of Design, we are exploring how extended reality could be used to communicate design and manufacturing heritage of post-industrial sitting and uh, you'll hear more from uh, this project from our undergraduate and PhD students later at this conference. Last but not least, um, we are um, within the uh, early watercraft global initiative conceived by my colleague Miran Eric. Uh, our team is also looking how this dispersed human heritage could uh, be communicated as one of the most um, important human inventions. Um, as uh, um, as uh, uh, um, German historian Detlo Elmer said in the 70s, in fact, only three times, <clears throat> excuse me, only three times of human history um, has man succeeded in leaving his natural um, habitat, dry land, and penetrating into the other dimensions. Um, on each occasion, a special apparatus was uh, required. First, the boat, then the aircraft, and uh, finally the rocket. So speaking of um, speaking of uh, uh, rockets in space, or digital transformation, uh, advanced manufacturing and industry 4.0 as critical enablers of the entrepreneurial real, um, innovation driven movement of so-called new space um, are democratizing the previously closed space sector. So the space industry is currently changing and growing area um, that requires a transdisciplinary approach um, from both STEM, so um, science, technology, engineering, and maths, as well as has um, humanities and social sciences. Um, up until now, uh, up until now, um, more than 600, uh, less than 600 people have been uh, to space since 1961, and only 12 have been walked on the moon between 1969 and 72. 
um, but with rapid, rapid development um, of commercial um, spaceflight, including reusable rockets and new propulsion systems, long duration human expansion beyond the low Earth orbit um, towards the moon and Mars may become a reality uh, also in the near future. So after 20 years uh, in operation, the uh, International Space Station, the ISS, uh, as a scientific lab in a size of a football field, may soon be retired due to the deterioration of the equipment and also growing cost of repair. So NASA has uh, recently announced to focus its uh, activities towards the Moon and Mars and leave um, the low Earth orbits um, to, the, to the commercial space stations, such as uh, Axiom Space uh, Station, Orbital Reef, and uh, Starland. Um, in Leo, low, low, low Earth orbit, there is also um, a Chinese Tianyong um, currently uh, being built and planned Russian uh, orbital space uh, station. So a lot is happening. Um, however, NASA is planning its own space station. Um, it's called Lunar, Orb uh, Lunar Gateway, which will not be orbiting uh, Earth, but uh, the Moon, but the Moon providing an analog for the future Mars missions and support the planetary outpost on the lunar south pole. So most of uh, the human space missions are focused on scientific research. However, uh, there's also growing economic interest in relation to resource utilization, uh, such as asteroid mining or uh, in-space manufacturing, as well as tourism, what you've probably heard from the news. Um, the success of human space flight activities also depends on the successful development of reusable rockets, where SpaceX is leading the way with their Starship vehicle currently uh, under development. So this will um, be the largest even uh, ever developed, um, uh, the largest rocket ever developed uh, by humans so far, with in-space refueling um, capable to carry uh, humans to Mars. So um, per um, the, Lyot, the, the global space economy is currently worth over uh, 420 billion American dollars in 2020. And uh, it is forecasted to grow to over uh, more than 1 trillion uh, American US dollars by the 2040. So also um, Australia is, um, uh, Australia is uh, um, uh, contributing uh, approximately only 1% of the global space sector. Well, this is expected to grow um, at 7.1% per annum over the next five years. So um, the Australian Space Agency goal, um, the agency was established in 2019, is to triple the size of this um, space economy in Australia. Uh, from 4 billion um, Aussie dollars to um, 12 billion by 2030. And they're also targeting 20,000 um, new jobs. So with those numbers, we will see more people living and working in space in the next decades uh, who will need uh, not only well-designed uh, vehicles and habitats, but also support to sustain their work-life balance. So the question is, what is the role of museums and glam institutions, so galleries, libraries, archives, museums, um, uh, in creating a holistic transdisciplinary approach of serving spacefaring society? And also, how can extended reality and similar 3D technologies support these uh, memory institutions in their endeavors? Uh, up until recently, museums were mostly involved in space exploration through collecting and exhibiting space-related objects, uh, including uh, technical heritage and memorabilia. Uh, in relation to audience engagement, the main purpose of space museums is still uh, often um, seen as a vehicle to, or st to stem uh, outreach. So um, various... Um, uh, various uh, geology, geology, um, geologists, archaeologists, and um, uh, 
uh, various um, uh, lawyers, um, architects, and heritage professionals uh, are currently um, exploring ways to preserve both geological and human heritage in outer space and uh, on celestial bodies to ensure sustainable environment uh, as inspiration for future generations. So, for example, for all moon kind, uh, a permanent observer to the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space is working on their moon registry. Um, this is uh, uh, all human heritage um, register uh, of the lunar, uh, of the, the heritage that is uh, on the moon, uh, including uh, lunar landers um, and some uh, personal objects uh, from the astronaut. So one of the main uh, aim of this initiative is to protect the first human footprint and lunar landers from the Apollo area before we return to the moon in the next years. So just to think, um, can we communicate heritage of the Apollo 11 sites through XR virtual tours uh, for people on Earth who not go to the moon as, for example, workers or space tourists? Then the internationally recognized uh, leader in space archaeologist, uh, Dr. Alice Gorman from Fl Flinders University in Australia, uh, investigates space debris as archaeological data. Uh, there have been proposals uh, for a pop up intergalactic museums and even an orbiting um, satellite collection storage to protect and preserve museum objects um, from climate change uh, consequences on Earth. So uh, going back to, um, to human space exploration, uh, it presents not only technical challenges, but also health and well-being associated concern. So if we want to go to space to thrive, as they like to say, not only to survive, all aspects of human life have to be considered from working, uh, sleeping, eating, hygiene, to leisure time uh, and uh, play. For example, uh, weakening uh, and deterioration of muscles in microgravity is one of the most prevailing concerns um, of human space exploration. So as a countermeasure, astronauts um, on the International Space Station spend uh, 2.5 um, hours per day just exercising. The current equipment is relatively heavy or it's bulky, produce vibrations and often fails. So when going to the moon and Mars, such equipment will need to be much more robust and lightweight. But astronauts also report that the uh, exercises are quite monotonous and they soon lose motivation to interact with the equipment. Um, if you haven't been to the gym, you might be familiar with that uh, by yourself. So how can we create more engaging exercise equipment uh, using XR? Um, this presentation discusses another potential role of um, heritage. So how can meaningful and engaging museum content um, in form of gamified immersive XR experience could support mental health and well-being of astronauts and people living and working um, in isolated and um, confined environments of Earth? So how can we merge of heritage experience to provide more engaging exercise program um, as well. So uh, taking this uh, holistic uh, perspective, how can those astronauts and people living and working in space ensure and maintain their EPIC resilience? In this case, EPIC stands for emotional, physical, intellectual, and creative resilience. The framework has been developed by an Australian inventor and futurist uh, living in San Francisco, Sally Dominguez. And in collaboration with Sally, we are intending to create workshops um, addressing this topic on a more creative way. So uh, we are currently teaming up with the um, uh, psychologist, Dr. Anahita Nezami from the UK, who has developed a meditative program called VR Overview Effect and who works in the area of space health. Uh, we're also working with a colleague from Deacon School of IT, Dr. Bahare Nikisa, who uh, works in the intersection of applied AI, wearable sensors, and mental health, as well as our space designer, Kaori 
uh, Betzeril from Space Tech Startup Barium Labs uh, in Mexico. So this initiative is um, uh, also a valuable uh, learning platform for our engineering students. Uh, at Deacon School of Engineering, uh, I teach human center design and product development. And in the previous trimester, we have started with a team of four international master students who um, are working on the projects titled Gamified Exercise Equipment for Astronauts. Um, and uh, as a part of their final year project uh, running across two trimesters. On the right side, you can see a few images from the user research and concept generation from that uh, student team. They will continue with uh, design iterations and detailed design next year. Uh, but during our semester, uh, summer or trimester, uh, starting next week, uh, a similar design challenge will be introduced to 24 master students uh, and undergrad students who will be undertaking uh, the units um, um, uh, engineering design as part of their course. So as part of our research proposal, we also intend uh, to provide an opportunity for PhD students as well. Uh, one minute, Tasha. Okay, it was not uh, 20. Okay, so um, how do we uh, know uh, heritage to mercy experience can support mental health of people living and working in space? To understand this, uh, we are proposing to design and develop a real time monitoring system to detect emotions and well being of astronauts uh, using lightweight uh, wearable sensors. Um, for example, um, so how we, we recognize human emotion states. Uh, emotions are. Um, it's, it's very uh, complex uh, psycho uh, physiological phenomena and contains many nonverbal cues. So in general, responses can be divided into internal physiological responses and external, external uh, physiological responses. So mainly we are talking about uh, wearables like uh, wristbands and headsets uh, that, can, that can measure uh, this data. And this can be correlated with um, interviews and survey. So for example, um, just to give you a glimpse of some previous work of our team, um, here are some Baharev um, and her team works uh, using smart wearable sensors. For example, they were looking at emotions, recogn uh, recognitions with uh, watching videos using smart sensors um, and uh, facial positions. Uh, they were also uh, exploring the um, uh, the stress detection in drivers while driving in different scenarios. And uh, before developing um, uh, an, uh, an engaging exercise equipment as a countermeasure for massa entropy, we are intending to investigate the um, psychological benefits of heritage VR in isolated, confined, and extreme environments. So first, uh, we are planning to develop a digital heritage VR pilot, um, content based on previous um, digital heritage projects and uh, Anahita's work in VR overview effect. Uh, and for that collection, we are targeting at least 120 participants at five pre-identified analog uh, astronaut missions, and hopefully also at the um, ISS. And uh, to conclude, um, I think it's really important to talk also about um, a space spin-off. So to provide a, a good uh, understanding um, how heritage immersive experience could support mental health and well-being, not only to astronauts, but also um, to other people. Um, digital heritage content would, for example, be used in prisons, uh, hospitals, retirement villages, and other isolated living and working environments such as uh, in Antarctica, uh, oil rigs or mines. So after global pandemic, uh, we may all uh, know how our, uh, through our own experiences, how important it is to maintain uh, mental health and well-being while being isolated um, in more or less uh, spaces, uh, confined spaces for longer periods of time. So thank you for so much for this um, uh, time.